In this video, we're going to focus on how to create an arbitrary line in Chart.js. And an arbitrary line is really useful. And maybe you have this question quite commonly, or you say, well, an arbitrary line, isn't that similar to a annotation line? That is correct. So let me show you exactly how to do this, or first of all, what we're going to refer to. This is what we call an arbitrary line or an annotation line. An annotation line usually consists of a line plus an annotation, which is consists of the text where you can highlight something. So an arbitrary line is specifically the line itself. So we're going to make a line very similar to this that will highlight or pinpoint the specific part here. This will be an individual plugin. So it will be interesting and very useful for you as well to learn because so you will dive deep into Chart.js plugins, which is one of my most favorite topics. All right. First of all, before we continue, let's draw our chart. So we're going to create a chart here. So I'm going to grab all of this here. I'm going to copy all of this. Paste this in here, and while I did that, the next one, um, just a quick note, this is the Chart.js documentation 3.1.4, uh, 3.4.1, sorry, which is the latest one as of now. And then here, click on Getting Started, Getting Started submenu, and in here you have the link of the Chart.js library. Grab that one, put it in here. And then the next one I will do is I'll just copy this text here because we already have a div here and everything, it saves me some time, copy. Delete this one here because we don't need to hide them with. We already have a nested div. All right. So then afterwards, we're going to give this a proper indentation. Tap, tap. There you are. Next, give it a class. So in here, class will be chart box, indicating the specific width. And the reason why I'm doing this is to avoid that the chart will grow into infinity. In here, in the style tag, dot for the class, class name. Let me say you're with 700 pixels is more than sufficient. Save that, go back here, refresh. All right, so we have a bar chart here. I want to convert this into a line chart. And then after that, we're going to create our plugin. So to do this, let's convert it to a line chart. And then what I want to do is I want to remove all the excess colors. No need for this. We only have one color here for the line chart. Make sure you put a comma here. Here, same story, I'll delete everything else. And put a comma here. All right. And then save this. If I save this, refresh, you can see here we have now this line chart. I don't like the line chart tension. The tension here is far too tight. We're going to put the tension on zero, 0 0.4 to make it more elastic. So we say tension, tension. And I say here 0 0.4. And the border width can be removed. By default, a line chart has three pixel border width. You can see that's far more healthier or nicer to see. Healthier is probably not the right term, but it looks far more appealing enough to the eye, eye pleasing. So what we're going to do here now, first of all, this is very important. I always want to do this now, and I want to make sure you really know this. We're going to use the setup block, the config block, and the rendering block. The reason why is that Charge is working in a structure that's more and more consistent, and you really need to know this. So repetition is the mother of all learning. They say, I'm repeating this consistently, but to make sure that if anyone else who's new, at least they know this as well. So in here, I'm going to say setup block, all right? And then here we have the config block. And finally, we have here the uh, render slash initialization block. So in here, in the setup block, we're going to work with a constant. I mean, this constant will equal data. 30 braces, semicolon, enter. In here, we're going to put in the data information. That is basically this part here, everything between the data. So I'm going to cut out this and just paste it in there. There you are. So now we're done with that. The next one is the config block, which is the configuration. So we say a constant config equals, all right, semicolon, and then you enter. And in here, we're going to say the following. We say here, well, basically, what I call the three parts or the skeleton bones or the foundation of Chart.js, which is the type, data, and the options. Without this, you cannot do anything at all. So we say here the type is a line, which is correct. The data, I'm going to remove everything here and just maintain the comma. The reason why is this is in charge yes, of uh, JavaScript ES6. You have data, you have data this, which is data equals data. No need to put in double. Redundancy, just keep it dry, keep it dry they say. All right, there are any options. Fair enough. We're done here. Final one is the constant, which will be the my chart. I'm going to grab this. Main reason for this is because our ID is also called my chart. In here, we're going to say new, and then we say chart, 
And this is a constructor. So that's why we're going to use per parentheses instead of curly braces. Semicolon, enter. And in here, we'll say document dot get element by ID. We just same, and then we get this one here. This is a string. There you are. No need for this. Chart.js is intelligent enough and understands now that this is related to a canvas. They have the building in the constructor, so you can skip this one. It's already by default included. Comma, and then we say the config. We want to grab the config, load the config, because the config uh, variable or constant consists of this, consists of all of this. And in here, we have the data variable, which consists of all the data that we need. So basically, this is dependent on this, and this is dependent on the data block here. As you can see, we have all of this nicely together. Delete all of this text here. Save. Save. Refresh. There we are. Everything works. We change the structure, but the design on the canvas is consistently the same. All right. This means now it's time for working with the plugin. Before I even continue with the plugin, I want to tell you only one thing that you need to do. Oh, well. I'm going to make this plugin block. So let's call this, this is called the arbitrary line. So arbitrary line with capital L plugin. All right. But before I do this, I want to make sure, because this is a mistake that I sometimes make. Here we say here, we're going to uh, load the plugin. We say plugins, then brackets. And then we grab the arbitrary line, which is the name of the plugin. Very, very important. Make sure you have a comma here. Reason why we do this first is because Without this, it will not draw the chart plugin features. So this is very important. Of course, now there's nothing yet, but once there is, it will draw it. If not, if you do this here and you will wonder why is it not drawing because you didn't activate it. That's a mistake that I made sometimes. So, so to avoid that, so you know. All right. The thing what I'm going to do here now is we're going to work with the constant. And this constant will be, of course, the same name that we have here. The arbitrary line here this is a constant. And then this constant equals the following. We're going to give it an ID, and the ID is the name of the plugin. Arbitrary line. Very important. Because this here is matching with this. That's why these are these should be all consistent as possible. Alright? Once we have this, we put in comma, and then we're going to do a function. And then here we're going to work with understanding how everything works, or at least understanding the structure. So first of all, let's make the function. We're going to draw the function, or basically this function is called before drawing. We want the following values. We want to have the chart, which is the chart in the canvas. Comma, we have all the arguments within that chart. And we want the options. And the reason why we want the options is later on we're going to connect and do some customized options here that you can put in. And then you have like a real plugin, not like a fake plugin that you need to put it in here. So I don't want to do that. I want to make sure it's a professional plugin. In here we're going to work. But before I go to start with this, I want to define here two items that we're going to do. Number one, because this is the challenge here. So, all right, I'm going to draw a line. This is the challenge you have. Number one will be uh, how to draw a line. Number two will be where to position the line. And to be honest here, what are we looking for? Let me show you. Let's look at this. You can see here, we are here on March. And March, it pinpoints exactly that dot here. We want to have this here. And what we also want to have, we want to make sure that's in the line area here. So not even outside. Because if you look at a canvas, if I open up my developer tab here and get the inspector, you will see here, this is the entire canvas. I don't want the entire canvas because I will have space here above. I, will, I might go over here. I might go beyond here or beyond there, etc., etc. I don't want this because that looks hideous. So we need to really figure out how can we get just only the square, the inner lines here, figure out the width of this, figure out the height of this, and figure out the exact position of these dots here so we can pinpoint the specific dot. These are your real challenges here, which is the position. And more specific here, the y and x position on the scale. All right? Is it hard? Don't worry, I will show you exactly how. All right, first things first. First, we're going to make a constant, and this constant will consist of all the values where we can later on define the position. So we say a constant, 30 braces, then we have your CTX, meaning for the canvas, we're going to pinpoint the canvas and say comma, chart area, and chart area is basically your answer. 
for figuring out the exact area of the chart, not even the canvas, but I want the chart area, which is these lines here. These are the lines related to chart area because the canvas itself starts at here to down to here and then here up in the corner. So in the chart area, what do I do? What do I want to get? Well, basically I want to get a few parameters, which is top, comma, left. Or maybe you can do it uh, clockwise, top, right, bottom, comma, left. And then, of course, what more we need to have the width. And the width stands for left to right. And this will be important later on. I'm going to tell you later why. And then also height, top to bottom, comma, height. All right. Once we have this, we say here, comma again. And then we say skills. And in the skills, we have X comma y and we say here equals chart all right so you can save this here basically it still does nothing all right but what is this here you might say okay what, what's going on here what, what do we have here now what is the x and the y because we're going to get the scales here. first of all here this is related to the chart area but after that we have the scales and the scales are related to oh sorry not there but let me go back here scales are related to all of this here, basically the X and the Y. Uh, this is the X and this is the Y. But specifically, we have the scales, now we can get the points. So for example here, if you want to get the yellow one, and let's assume that every line here is like 100 pixels, and this here is about 20 pixels, so this would be 40 pixels. So we need to go 200 pixels here to the right, and going up here is about, well if it's 20 per, per block here, it will be about 30 pixels. So then, this value here is 200, uh, x is 200 equals y is 30. Same story here, we will be x is 300 and y is 250. Or sorry, not 250, uh, uh, this is 30, I guess that will be 50, 50 points. Because 20, 20, 10, all right? Same here, x would be 400 by 10, or 20, etc., etc. So, all right, enough about the numbers. I want to show it to you so it's more and more clear than what I'm trying to explain. Uh, first of all, before we even do this, let's draw the line because the drawing the line is the essential part here. All right, so we're going to do this before we even draw the line. We must say here ctx dot save. What this really does is it basically it saves all of these these constants, and now it starts to understand that these constants can be used for uh, as a variable in the formula. So then here we say the following: we say here we're going to draw. Let's draw the line first. If you draw the line, you first must give it a color in can canvas before you draw the line, as in the height and the size, etc., etc. Or else it will not draw the line at all because there's no color. First color. So CTX, then we say here stroke style equals, well, let's give this a very simple color red. Easy to spot. Then the next one will be CTX dot, and then we say here stroke. Okay, let me explain why it's stroke. All right, and then equals. So stroke, if you think about a canvas, canvas is basically the, the, the blank painting, uh, well, canvas, I guess, the, the blank fabric that you put on your, uh, for the, that they use for the painting where people paint. So that's what you call canvas. So it's blank. So that's what they call the stroke. A stroke is basically a line. So if you, if you make a line with your paintbrush, we call that a stroke. And I guess they call that, that's why they call this a stroke as well, because basically it's a line. But, uh, and since it's in what they call the, the team of painting, they call it a stroke. So how many stroke brushes do we use? If it's a rack, this is a rectangle, meaning four stroke brushes, right? We're going to create a square or a rectangle shape. So one line, two line, three line, four line, so four strokes. So once you understand this, you will understand here, I need to remove the equal sign, but I'm going to put in this. You're going to put in here four data points. All right, I'm going to say them here, this zero, x1, over x0, y0, x1, y1. All right, let's break this down. So what is this exactly? I'm going to put these comments here. What is this? So this is basically the uh, we call the starting point, starting point of the uh, starting point on the horizontal line. Starting point on the horizontal line 
with ba uh, basically from left to right. Huh? So this left to right. So this one is the starting point. So then you figure out that y will be the starting point on the vertical line, top and bottom, basically. So for example, if we are going to say here x0, and we want to pinpoint this one, this blue dot, or this dot here value of blue, we need to go how many to the left? Or how many to the right here? Our starting point is here. So we have to go x0, and if this would be about 100 pixels, we have to go x0, 100 pixels. And if this here, this length here is 20 pixels, so 100 pixels left, and then down, so this y, y0 will be 10 pixels. All right? So this is very important. I'm going to show it to you as well. Same story here. And then once we have this, this here, number one, and I'm going to put in some enters, so yeah, this is the ending point. An ending point doesn't mean the bottom here, but the ending point means how long will this line be? More specifically, the ending point will be how long will be the line? Meaning, for example, if you have this and you have then here a x10, yes, so let's say here, we go down here, here, and then we say here will be x will be 100, meaning then the line will start here going all the way to here. So that's basically, basically maybe not the ending point, but the length of the of the line. That's probably a more better term. Sorry, I guess this is the length, and this will be the length of the vertical line. That's the real term. All right. So now we have this here. So we already figured it out. So let's make something. So if I would assume here, if I want to hit this one, I will assume here. All right, I need to go one of the pixels to the right. And then I want to go down here 10 pixels, approximately. So let's start an explore because basically it starts in the canvas here up. Yeah, it starts already here to be honest. The calculation is starting from this square you can see. So 100 will be here. You go down here. You need maybe maybe 50 pixels or 30 pixels going down, as you can see here. And because you have also this here, maybe 120 because this is 20 pixels or something like that. So let's try that. All right. So I'm going to just draw something 120. And then here would be 50, and then I will just make here a line of 100, and then I will stop the. I will just put on zero. So if we want to go down, it would just be a line. All right. But once we did this, the next thing what I need to do here, I'll just put it down here. I'll just say ctx dot restore. So once you've done this, what you need to do, you need to restore. Restore means forget everything what's above here to be saved. Why? If not, then the it cannot start to draw the chart itself because it would just grab these numbers only save this refresh there we are all right so we're quite close to be honest i was kind of surprised but not not exactly however here you can see 100 pixels would be probably a bit more uh, but as you can see here this is quite hard and if you would do here let's say uh, 50 you will see you get a, a square with a blank background as you can see here so we have like this very nice Although I don't think this is quite commonly used, these kind of things, but but maybe you have like special important parts. However, I want to get this exact point. So how do we do this now? Because this here will be all manual labor and will be it will drive you nuts. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to remove all of this. You figured this probably uh, uh, well. I will just maintain this for now. I'm going to work here now. So let's start to work with our most important part. We have all of these data here, so now you should be able to figure out a few things. So let's start with basically here. We are positioned the line. So we need to have the x and y position, and more specifically, I want to have the x position here. I need to know the starting point because 100 pixel or how much was that? 120 pixel was not the right one. Maybe it's 150. Let's save that. Let's see what happens. 150 gets closer, but too hard. So how do we figure it out here? All right. Here is your powerful trick that you need to know. Let's make here console.log. I'm going to show you the exact data point. So we say here x, y, x, we have it in here. Remember, this is our x. We already pinpoint with the scale. So that's how you can use this. If you don't have this scale, you are not able to use that. All right. So you have the scale pinpointed. Let me say here get pixel for value. And then this is, well, let's see. 
which number is it? If we say zero, it will be this x here. If you want this one, we need to have number one, number two, because these are index numbers. All right. Later on, we want to have yellow, but let's try on this one for the blue, which is this point here, blue. So we say x one. So if I get this value here and refresh, we go now here to our console log. All right, you can see here 157, etc. As you can see, it was very close. 150 was close, but 157 is the right point. Let's double check this. Grab this. Get here the starting point. Save that. Refresh. There you are. You can see now we are exactly on the right location. Now you say, well, what about here up? We need to get the Y as well. In our case, we don't need the Y. We need to start here up. So how do we do this? From up all to down. Well, you figured out we have the chart area here. We already get the top. So we want a starting point is top. All right. If I save this now, let's refresh. We go all to the top. All right. Now we want to know the, uh, we don't want to move the X value here or the ending. We just want to stay here. So we can put this here, the X, because we don't want to move anywhere in the position. So my question is, do we put one or do we put zero? You might say, well, we need to put one because of one pixel. Well, the answer is no. Put it on zero. So you have no movement at all. Zero will be zero pixels. All right. So how do we grab this one here? Then you might say, all right, I know what we need to do. We just get the bottom. Save bottom here. And then you'll see you get a mistake. Refresh. Bam. There you are. What happened is the bottom will go down, but it will go down all completely here. But we don't need this here. Basically, the bottom here grabs a certain position. It's a pixel point. Yes, but not the length. What we need here is the height, not the bottom, because the bottom here, let's look at what the bottom really gives you. Refresh, the bottom is 321. And that's probably here, that's pixel 321. Why is this 321? Remember how we calculate this. You can see here, it's still calculate, including this white space here above, because that's a canvas. Canvas calculates from normally, in a chart, you're used to, to see the line going from down and then from, from down left and right, going up and etc. etc. Like a bar chart. You start here and going up. But this is not how chart or how canvas works. The canvas works from top going down. So it's exactly the opposite. And what they did in chart yes is they calculated in the opposite direction for you basically to simplify it. That's it's honestly very brilliant. So if you understand the background of that, and that's one of my videos of Canvas. I'm gonna say in Canvas, you will understand it more. But this is not what we need. We need here the height. The moment we get the height, we get the exact height because then we get the exact length. Refresh this. And there you are. You can see here now beautifully we get the point here and this is our annotation. All right, so now we're done here. Let's put it on number two when we are done here. And you say, okay, wait a minute. We have this here, but let's be honest. I want to remove all of this data here now. We now also understand this point, how to get the scale because we have this all figured out here based on all of this here. So you should know this now. I'm going to remove all of this here now. Now you say, wait a minute, I don't like this. And, and why you don't like this is I don't want to adjust in my plugin directly the color red or green if they would be green. Let's refresh here, you can see here. I don't want this, no. I want it like in, in chart where you have the options. You are absolutely right, so am I. I want to go, in, let's soft code this because this is all hard coded stuff and hard coded stuff is not good for your, for your chart. So let's start and work now on here. And here we're going to work on the options the scales, I'm going to put a comma here. Then we say your plugins. And here, what is the name of the plugin? Remember, the ID name here is arbitrary line. There we are. So we're going to save this, paste this in here, arbitrary line, and in here. So what we're going to do is here. First of all, let's let's give it a proper name. So what should we call this line here? Should we call the stroke style? No. Like in Charger, they have these very nice background colors. So what I'm going to give it, I'm going to say this will be the arbitrary line color. All right. So I'm going to copy this and say here, and I say color. And here equal, let's make this green or blue. But if you do this right now, it will not work, of course. So just refresh. Sorry, I don't understand what's going on here. Invalid shorthand. We have to create a proper shorthand. Because this is our shorthand, but we didn't reference the shorthand. So let's create the reference of the shorthand. How do we do this? This is why you have the options here. Grab this, put it in here, and then we're going to grab this one as well. And then we say here, options dot arbitrary line color. 
So we say this equals that. This is how Chart.js works. So you have these nice shorthands with proper naming conventions. So you have a nice right name here. This makes far more sense for me than a stroke style. Save this, refresh. Oh, shorthand initialize it. Uh, let's double check what's going on here. Uh, let's see. Am I missing something? Stroke hand. We say here the stroke style, sorry, the stroke style options equals arbitrary line color equals. Yes, we get it here. Oh, let's double check. Hold on. All right, so I've re realized where my mistake was. Sorry about this. I, I need to do proper indentations here. So the issue was that we're putting it in the options, and I thought I did it in the options, but apparently there must be an issue here. So let me double check. Are we in the options? We are. Mm, let's see. Arbitrary line color. Oh, we are in the option, so I'm quite surprised. Syntax error. So we are in our. Oh, just double check. All right, I got it. Sorry about this. I uh, I guess I'm getting confused by using too many different structures here. We have the equal, and here, of course, don't use an equal here. Sorry about this. Save this. Once you save this, refresh. There you are. All right. So everything was fine. Most important one, maybe I thought this is what I first thought. I thought I didn't put it in the options, but of course it was in the options. Make sure if you do the plugins, options, plugins, and then the plugin name. So here is line color. I just changed that. I was thinking maybe there was an issue. Basically, I will put this back to arbitrary line color. Put this again here, change it to arbitrary line color. If you save this now, you will see everything works fine. It was just the equal. All right. First one done, finally, I guess. And if I change this, let's say make this pink, do we see? There you are, starts to adjust, all right. So uh, let's make this uh, blue again, save this, refresh. Number one has been solved. Number two, here is the same issue. You say, well, we have this number here, I don't want this here, I want this automatically to be uh, inserted by, by yourself, all right, comma. Let's give it a proper name. In this case, because this is about the X position, the position of the X data point. So I'll just call it an X position, which makes sense. So I say here, X position equals, and this is a number, we can say, let's say number three here, or number two, wherever it's yellow, let's put it on the green. We'll go number three. All right, then here, we'll say here again, options dot X position is capital P, is that all right save that refresh now we move here all right you've got this now here so now we have everything what i do want to do and this is the final part of it it's, uh, as this video is getting quite long but there's some part that's important so let's make this a bit more nice but you can see here this doesn't look so nice honestly so i'm going to show you some tricks to make this more like eye candy or more more the aesthetics to be more pleasing so we're going to put in here a few items so what we're going to do here is the following we're going to say here Let's make the point radius bigger. Five. If I save this here, refresh. All right, you can see here now it's getting bigger, but there's one downside is that the border radius is not. So let's fix that one as well. So we say here the point border width. And this one could be about, uh, let's say, make it two pixels. And then we have to do the background color. What I want to do is the background color, I will just make it similar to the line color here. So I'm going to grab here. I can see here, oh, that's basically in there. The border color here, this should be one. All right, save this, refresh. There you are, all right, almost done. What I want to do still more is I want to give this uh, the border radius uh, with, or not really the way the border radius color, so the border color of the radius will be white. So this border here around will be nice white, so it will be look far more nicer and matching. Comma. So in here, we're going to say here, basically what we have here is the point border color equals string white. Save that here, refresh. There you are. That looks slightly better. And now we can change this. Let's make that gray. And we put this on gray. Save. Refresh, 
and there you are. So this looks quite nice. And this is really a way how you can be more advanced. So one more thing before I even continue on. Maybe you say this is too thin, too narrow. How, how do we solve this? Well, let me show you. Well, remember when I said here, if you put in zero, that's not possible. If you put in one, what happens is that you get a thicker line, but it's not really in the center. So, and what happens is, well, you say maybe, maybe you want to do five pixels. If you save this, refresh, you get an issue here. All right. Why? This is a stroke. This is not what we call a, a square. Remember, it's a stroke brush. So let's change it to stroke. So, or like a, a square. So we should put in fill. We have the fill. That's why we have this here. And then the stroke rec will be a rec fill. So if I save this now and refresh, now it becomes a very thick bar. Downside here is, of course, this is not yet in the center. So how do we do this? Well, to do this, we need to use some formula here. Because what happens is basically you can do it like this. In here, in the option position, you have to say basically minus 2.5, which is the half of this. You save that. You put it more in the center. But maybe you don't like this. Or I don't want to do this because maybe if next one will be 10. Then you have a problem again. All right. Formula. Let's do it in formula. Let's assume you fix or else you can do a shorthand where you can play around with that. But but this is basically what I'm going to show you. I'm going to make a very basic version. Here, we can do the following. Let's say here constant, and then we can say here uh, x width for now. I just call it x width. I have no real proper term for it. And then what we can do here is this. And what we can do then is we have the x width here. And we're going to basically, we say minus x width divided by 2 so we will always have the same x width or thickness so if i save this now semicolon here save this refresh now you have this one and if this changes to 20 let's say there you are so it keeps it in the center of course you can do this also in here should we have a shorthand it's up to you you can say here as well x width you can say here uh, uh, we can make a shorthand as well. We just say option, but that's all right for now. I, I will just leave it for now because the video is quite long. But this is basically the way you can do it. I will make another video as well where you can do the vertical version, or sorry, the horizontal. That's a horizontal version because now we have a vertical specifically pointing the x value. But what what if you want to have from left to right on the y value? Well, that's a nice video for the next time. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.